We are live. Uh, everyone, a very good evening to all of you. Thank you so much um, for taking the time out. Already, we see we see a bunch of people have already joined. Uh, before before I go on, just just some housekeeping in case you can hear me all right. See us all. See Anando, James, me all right. Just give us a thumbs up. We're all clear on um, on the comment section, and uh, you know we can go on. I'll just wait for one confirmation, which um, I have. Um, anyway, um, uh, I, without further ado, let's, let's just dive straight into the webinar and let me introduce the two people that will host you today. Uh, first up, of course, um, a very integral part of the TLF program team, Ananda Sengupta, he's been involved, uh, involved in, uh, really lining up an all-star faculty, one of whom you'll be speaking with today. And, uh, and he's been doing this in the spare time he's been able to create uh, beyond running his own startup, um, Track My Beat, which is in healthcare management. And uh, of course, after that, he's also the, he heads a pre-sales team at Nagaro. And um, Ananda went to IIT Delhi and subsequently I am Calcutta. And uh, he's got he's got a very diverse experience. And it's uh, Ananda, thank you so much. It's been uh, great having you in all the webinars. Thank you for joining us today as well. Um, uh, talking about all, all star lineup, of course, we have um, James who's joined us today uh, from UC Berkeley. Um, James is going to be one of the faculty teaching at the Tech Leaders Fellowship. He's, he's got over 25 years of experience and spent about 11 years at UC Berkeley now um, from 2008. And uh, I was just reading up his profile and I realized uh, he's, he's just not a uh, powerhouse of information, but also of productivity. He's published over uh, uh, he's got 50 publications to his name, over 20 patents, and six books even. Um, so, uh, James, uh, it's early morning for you. Thank you so much for taking the time out. Um, the agenda is going to be fairly straightforward. James is going to spend about 10 minutes talking to all of you on the course he's going to teach, on um, on uh, and and on on what he'll do at uh, TLF. Uh, post which Ananda will take us through a very short presentation um, of of the fellowship. And we'll open it up for Q&A in about 20, 25 minutes. James, over to you. OK. <clears throat> I'm um, going to share my screen here, I guess. But uh, good morning, or good evening, everybody. I know it's late there. I know it's a, been a long Friday for you guys, so I won't keep you too long here. But I wanted to introduce myself and give you a sense of the kind of things we'll be talking about uh, during, the, during the program. And I want to share my screen here and how do I share here? Um, there is a green arrow on your left. Um, you okay. can see a little, yeah. Yeah. Great. And I guess now, can you see slides at this point? Yes. Yep. Okay, great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, um, you know, um, uh, these days, um, everybody's working on uh, the, the future of data science and AI, and 2020 vision is no longer enough. We need to look at 2030 and see how uh, society will be changed by data science and artificial intelligence. And um, as uh, was mentioned previously, I, I teach at UC Berkeley, um, and I also, so I wear multiple hats on, on any given day. So I teach at uh, UC Berkeley, and um, then I, I have clients uh, who are Fortune 500 companies, uh, including Target, um, Akamai, AT&T, and then I also um, have a lot of experience in startups. So I've started multiple companies, sold companies, and I continue to work in the startup world as well. And at UC Berkeley, we have uh, an accelerator uh, called Skydeck, and uh, I've been involved in that as well. And uh, they're typically we have about 20 companies that come through there every six months. And uh, and um, so it's kind of very exciting to be involved there and to see the idea generation. Um, ideas go from um, back of the envelope type of, um, uh, of notes to actually slides to prototypes, MVPs, to getting funding from VCs and beyond. And so, um, 
Um, so, so, so just kind of some background on myself here. Um, you know, I've been working in this field for 30 years. That's, that's three zero. And I started working in AI back in 1989 um, as part of my, um, my um, bachelor's degrees in degree in computer science and business. And uh, I was born and raised in Ireland. And then I worked in Japan for five years as an AI software engineer. Believe it or not, that was my job title, AI software engineer. And then I went back and did my PhD in machine learning and AI uh, at the University of Bristol in England. And then um, I uh, went on to work with Xerox Research, and I was in France. And I started a company there. And um, that was a very exciting time for me because I, I felt I, I got an MBA on the job doing the startup. And um, uh, it was amazing to work at Xerox, a big company, because uh, it had a lot of infrastructure. Um, I had a lot of people I could work with. Uh, I worked with uh, three MBAs and engineers and scientists um, that helped me get this company launched. And we got funding as well from Xerox. And um, from there, I went to the US and I started to work with a spin-off lab from Carnegie Mellon University. Um, and that was more in the natural language processing uh, search um, and knowledge management area. And then in 2005, I moved out to uh, San Francisco. and. Um, um, I, I, I was the founding chief scientist of, a, of a, um, an ad network advertising company, um, ad, ad advertising technology, basically. And so we, we, we built a company, sold the company there. And, um, and then I started my own consultancy. And I started teaching as well. So um, I've got one leg in academia and one leg in industry. And um, that's kind of interesting. It's a lot of work, uh, I, I must say, but it's really exciting to be kind of uh, be able to work in, in both uh, communities. And um, so if I was to summarize who I am, and maybe this is something for you to think about as well, I, I think about maybe three or four um, sets of skills that, that I think are important to consider in your career. So for me, uh, it's important to have, to have some technical skills. It's, it's, it's important to be able to, to write code. Uh, and, and so writing code could be anything from writing Python code or R code, or also being able to solve problems, not just in a single CPU, uh, but also across a cluster of machines. And, and these days, as you well know, CPUs are no longer maybe enough we can actually start to leverage GPUs, which are very custom-built um, um, processors that have a very simple instruction set that allow you to move things, do things, things faster. So GPUs are kind of um, very important. So having technical skills is really important, I found over the years. And so I still write code. I, I love writing code. And um, you know, to get for me to write code is kind of a pleasure because it's not, not something I can do every day. But when I do it, I really enjoy it. Then I think what's really important as well is to have some um, mathematical skills and, and understand the theory. Uh, because um, a lot of the stuff you'll be learning in this program, uh, you'll see that it'll appeal to your high school and maybe kindergarten type of training in math. We'll be talking about things like the equation of a line, y is equal to mx plus c. And we'll be using that left, right, and center. And you'll see that the equation of a line just kind of um, Getting that basics down uh, will help you a lot to understand the field of machine learning, not just linear regression, but all the way out to uh, deep uh, neural networks. And so it'll be important for us to kind of give you some uh, background and pick some of the important areas of math and optimization theory, probability theory, so that uh, you can then take on the big challenges of, say, working with more complicated systems such as deep neural networks. Um, so, you know, sometimes people get lost in the in the world of data science and machine learning and AI, and they think that's it. That, you know, once we master that, we are good. But it's important to have domain expertise. Uh, things just you just can't develop systems in a vacuum. You need to dig into uh, different verticals, whether it's in digital advertising and marketing, or in retail, or insurance, or in banking, or high frequency trading. It doesn't matter. You, you still need to have that kind of domain expertise, and that will bring a lot to the table. So that's another kind of skill set here that one should emphasize. And then it's kind of nice to be a good communicator and to have leadership skills. 
And so this is something that it's just kind of, kind of a soft skill. And I know that as part of this uh, program, we'll be um, helping you develop these skills as well. So I, I like this program that we have put together here because it kind of touches on all aspects of, of these skill sets here. And hopefully you'll enjoy learning and that you will learn a lot and you'll be well situated to move forward in your careers. So um, just a little bit about kind of the things we'll be doing. Um, so here's, here's kind of a kind of overview of maybe the program in some ways. Here's AI, it's a big field. It's been around since the 50s. And this x-axis here is our time axis. And then um, our y-axis is kind of like the scope of this, uh, these topics. So AI is this kind of superset of, of activities where we're trying to empower machines with human-like uh, intelligence. And, 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 and that ranges from learning to reasoning um, to perception, being able to say, okay, hear something, to be able to see something, um, and, and, and these days also to be able to smell things as well. And, um, and machine learning is just a subfield of this bigger field of AI. And um, this uh, machine learning has been around really from the 50s, 60s as well, but it didn't really start to flourish until the 80s and 90s and 2000s. And especially with the advent of the internet, uh, it really took off in a big way. But <clears throat> over the last, let's say, eight or nine years, we've seen this exponential explosion of um, of excitement, I should say, uh, around deep learning, where um, we've started to build bigger systems. Um, we have some smarter ideas around algorithms that allow us to solve uh, a lot of really complicated problems. And let me talk about some of these complicated problems here for, for a second. And, and I guess these days, it's no longer enough for us to, to um, to solve problems in, on big machines or in the cloud, but we want to solve them locally. And so we want to take your camera that's really a dumb pipe that just takes the images and, and, and then ships them to the cloud or to someplace else. But we want to make the camera smarter. So we want to put a chip on board in the camera and give it an edge-based type of computation. So edge-based AI is kind of a really hot topic these days. And we'll be looking at some of those things. So think of your phone as kind of a, a device that's like an edge device where we're trying to, to be able to we're trying to do things on the phone as opposed to shipping things to the cloud. So speech recognition is one of those uh, activities that uh, you know we, we'd like for the phone to be able to stand alone and be able to do speech recognition. But um, sometimes it's not possible because these models are very big and sophisticated. These models can be gigabytes in size. So can you imagine trying to install an app that is that is maybe two gigabytes in size? So it's not going to happen. But these days, we're starting to get to develop more sophisticated systems that will allow us, that are much smaller, that maybe have a footprint of maybe four or five meg, and therefore are, are, are computable on the edge. So. Um, I, I, you know, I'll be working with you on a number of different aspects of, of machine learning and AI and data science. But um, you know, we, we will first of all uh, understand some of the basics of of, 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 um, of of machine learning and, in particular, neural networks, and see how we can go from these kind of shallow networks. This is our inputs here. These are our outputs or our predictions. Um, and this is kind of our hidden layers, a uh, hidden layer of experts. And so these are kind of uh, shallow uh, neural networks. And we'll be going from these shallow networks to having multiple layers here. So think of these layers as layers in an organization in a company. And this is a very shallow company, maybe a small company. And this is a much bigger company. And so when we think about companies and organizations, well, we, we don't want too much of a hierarchy. So think, think of these as kind of the, the frontline engineers and, and scientists and, and, and maybe marketing folks. And these are managers, area managers, VPs. And then maybe we have maybe the big decision makers out here. These are our, our uh, so this is a typical hierarchical uh, situation. And so neural networks can be viewed basically as an organization, a typical organization like a company. Um, so think of them as Google, for example, uh, where you have uh, frontline engineers up to CEOs and so on. And so we've had this revolution over the last uh, uh, few years where th these hierarchies, this is 2012, and this is a, um, 
um, a particular challenge, data challenge that um, scientists have been working on all over the world. Uh, and so it's an annual competition. And in 2012, we were solving this it's a computer vision problem where we were trying to classify images into cats, dogs, cars, special types of flowers, and other. So there were maybe a thousand categories. And so in, in, during that time frame, we were solving this problem using a hierarchy of about eight. So you can imagine having a company where you have uh, eight levels in your uh, org chart. And, and in 2013, that went up to, say, nine. In 2014, we had 19 layers. That's a very, very deep company. Um, and in 2015, we went up to 152 layers. So can you imagine having a company where you have 152 layers? So this, 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 this slide here doesn't do it justice here. But uh, the next slide will kind of show you the scale of difference. This is our eight layer organization, 19 and 152. So there's a big difference here. And you can imagine the computational effort required here. And we'll be working on these things. And we'll be training networks, not quite 152, but we'll get to 50 layers at least, which will be a pretty exciting challenge for us. And we'll be working on CPUs and GPUs. And we'll also work on more uh, later. Um, so we'll also work on TPUs, which are these kind of special custom-built hardware devices. And we'll be solving problems not alone in you know across a variety of fields from consumer to healthcare, energy, government, and so on. And you know what? You know why? Why are you doing this? Why, why are you taking this course? Well, uh, Mark Cuban, he's a famous uh, kind of entrepreneur in the U.S., but his claim is that the first trillionaire is uh, a person who ma who masters AI. And I have a question for you in the audience. Maybe you can um, in, in chat. Maybe you can tell me the answer to your who who wants to be a trillionaire. I'm not sure if I can see this here, your answers, but maybe you can uh, say yes or no. I want to be a trillionaire. And uh, and for me, if you're going to be a trillionaire, you're going to be successful in AI, I guess. So is it is it is it possible to see the answers to the question? Or I don't know. Well, sure. not, not quite um, the, the answers. <laughs> so that's that goes on the YouTube comment section. But we will okay. let James when we get okay. to the Q&A. Right. So, yeah. so, so, you know, again, um, uh, you know, there, there's a lot of excitement around um, uh, AI and vision, and so the, the things that uh, that are really interesting are that you know these days um, when we combine AI with uh, the Internet of Things, we can uh, do amazing things. And so here is an example of how Wall Street is being transformed with data that we can get from drones that fly over car parks for shopping malls. This is a shopping mall here in the U.S., and here we're actually isolating cars in the car park. And we're trying to we're, we're counting how many cars in the car park. So you can imagine if I'm in Wall Street, this gives me a small little edge on on, on projecting the for, uh, forecasting the sales for particular department stores or, or organizations involved in retail. And so it, uh, in Wall Street, this kind of information can be really leveraged to help making making better investments and so on. And and this is not just uh, retail, but it's also in agriculture. This is uh, Brazil here. We have a satellite image of Brazil, and we are looking at soybean yield. And so we monitor soybean uh, in progress uh, from planting the crop to harvesting. And maybe after two or three months into the cycle, we can pro we can forecast how much the yield, how good the season will be, um, and therefore we can have this forecast uh, months ahead of. The actual yield being um, generated. Um, we, we can look at uh, how people sleep uh, and work. Uh, so this is a sleep. Uh, this is a lighting uh, map of the U.S. Again, we're looking at um, leveraging this data to see how maybe, for example, the economy is doing in the U.S. and how late people are up at night. Are they working late? Are they partying late? What's going on? And so um, the the um, other things that we'll look at is. Um, Here's, here's a car, and uh, in this car, we've installed a camera, a front camera and a back camera. The front camera is looking at the street out front and is trying to understand what, what kind of cars are, are what's, what's happening in front of you. Are you keeping your distance? Are you observing the rules of the road? Uh, are you speeding? And so we're using computer vision and regular telematics to do this. In addition, we have a, a back-facing camera which looks at you and monitors, are you asleep? Are you alert? Are you texting? What's going on? And so uh, over the next um, year or two years, we're going to see uh, a lot of more of these kind of smart um, cameras being deployed in cars and, and also built in as well. And um, and this is a huge area that kind of feeds into the autonomous vehicle. Uh, th this this functionality here is very much part and parcel of what's happening in a Tesla car. 
So we'll be looking at this, um, recognizing objects and detecting them and uh, understanding other things about them. Um, and, and sometimes maybe segmenting the objects at the pixel level as opposed to just the bounding box level. So um, th there's a whole bunch of really interesting applications um, uh, of computer vision and, 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 and combining that with deep learning and so on. And um, I, I'm going to just going to show you one more application, and then maybe we can open it up. So um, we'll be looking at chatbots. So who doesn't like their favorite chatbot? Maybe it's Siri. Maybe it's Alexa. There's, uh, there, there's just a whole plethora of these uh, chatbots that have been um, brought online over the last year. So it's a, a last, last few years. And these are just good examples of AI in practice, where you have to do speech recognition, um, understand, transcribe the the, the, the speech signal and then understand the task that's been needs to be solved and then come back with a solution. So typically we'll be saying long time no see, yup, how are you? Uh, I'm good, that's nice. So we can have a dialogue here. That's kind of, we've got multiple turns. It's not just a simple question answer, but uh, there's also um, maybe some follow up and so on. And so we'll be um, looking to solve these type of problems and we'll, you'll be working with me and, and others as well on this. So. And uh, when we think about AI, we, we, we're really practical. We want to solve really practical problems, like say, what time is it? Tell me the weather. Um, uh, give me a forecast. But uh, increasingly, we're starting to get into more creative side of, um, of using AI. So here's an example of this is the current day picture of me. And this is maybe a, a, I can get an older version or younger version of me by using this kind of creative application of, of, of deep neural networks. And this is via. Um, uh, things like generative advers adversarial neural networks. And so this is a whole new recent development that allows us to be more creative. So here, I'm just looking at older, younger versions of me. Uh, here, I've occluded part of the image. And now I'm uh, auto-completing the image. This is a kind of low res. But you can see that here, we've got a cat. And we've now been able to auto-complete the cat. And so this kind of activity is a uh, very uh, hot and, and, and a recent development. And, um, and, and not only, we'll also test and flex our creativity around writing poetry. And um, we'll start to generate poems that are like Shakespeare. And not only that, we may work on maybe building a screenplay. This is a screenplay that was generated using a, a neural network, a recurrent neural network. And it's called Sunspring. And, um, and is starring, uh, I don't know if you recognize these guys here, but uh, some of them are from Silicon Valley. And uh, this is a short movie, 10 minutes. And this is all entirely generated using machine learning and deep learning. And so we'll be looking at the creative side of uh, machine learning as well. So th these are some of the things that we hope that will help you become a, a rock star in data science and, and AI. And you'll be able to build these super models that we saw earlier, where we will have not just maybe one hidden layer, but we're going to have 150 layers or more. And, um, and so um, I guess at this point, I'd like to maybe stop and maybe um, maybe uh, give some time to, to um, Ananda. And, and maybe um, he's going to talk about the TLF. Um, a bit more, and then we're going to have a Q and A. So maybe hold your questions for uh, for a couple minutes, and maybe, and, uh, um, and and we can talk more about how we're going to help you become a rock star, and how you will be very um, um, skilled in building these super models. Okay. Thanks a lot, Jimmy. But uh, before we uh, jump into the presentation, uh, should we take any questions at all at this point, Shrinath? Sure, we could do that. We have a bunch of questions. We could do okay. that. Okay, great. Um, Jimmy, you can sh stop sharing your screen and then stop sharing my screen. Yeah, maybe okay. Jimmy, you can come back on video. Okay, uh, yeah. let me let me just stop sharing my screen here. How do I? Sure. Uh... Yeah, yeah we can you're good. You're done. Perfect. So I'm the done. Okay. Great. right. So the first question is from Mayank Gupta, and he's wondering uh, how how we plan to teach cutting edge AI in a year um, because with with deep math. And so his question is really on the duration of the course. OK, that's a great question. And um, so, so here's here's my, my, my philosophy, OK? So yeah, we, we, we could go a mile wide and an inch deep, meaning we could cover everything and survey everything. And you would not develop any muscle memory. 
So my, my philosophy is, look, uh, we've got to master a few things, core concepts. And then if you master those core concepts, then you can take them and apply them to um, and learn other things. So we may not cover all aspects of deep learning and all applications of deep learning, but we'll cover some really um, um, good examples that can allow you to scale and, uh, and apply uh, uh, and learn other things. So for example, when it comes to say computer vision, we're, we're gonna spend a lot of time understanding um, how, how to solve computer vision problems today with modern stacks. And we may not cover all of the latest, greatest things, but we're going to cover some very representative techniques that will allow us to recognize objects and detect objects. And, um, and, and so uh, these, um, so today when we look at machine learning and deep learning in particular, there, there are a couple of building blocks that are kind of important. So it's important for us to understand the notion of the, the, the objective uh, uh, function are the key performance indicator that we're trying to optimize. And that's, that's a mathematical concept. And we'll spend a lot of time just working on that and, what, and, and kind of understanding different um, KPIs and, and objective functions that we want to optimize or maximize or minimize. Then there are architectures. Um, that, that's, and there are building blocks that go into these architectures. And so it'll be very important for us to spend time looking at these building blocks. So think of these build, think, think of uh, an architecture for a neural network as like a jigsaw, not a jigsaw puzzle, but a, but a Lego puzzle. And uh, in, in that Lego, we have building blocks. And when we put them together, we, we build out a, a network that can solve uh, very hard problems. But it'll be important for us to understand each of those building blocks. And then we put them together. Um, so, so basically, we're going to spend a lot of time working on core stuff. And, um, and, and, uh, and then uh, we'll take some prototypical applications and, 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 and we'll work through in, in code, in theory, uh, equations, math, and with code, and then with also with uh, um, case studies. And so we do not want to overwhelm you in one year but we certainly want to give you survival skills in this space and emphasize um, the important concepts that will then enable you to learn by yourself as well. Yeah, so thanks, thanks a lot, Jimmy. That was the right answer. If, 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 we can, if I may add, the fundamental thought here is to teach uh, the strength so, the, so that you have enough knowledge to go and do certain things by yourself so if you see what will happen, if you looked at the program uh, plan, there's a challenge lab and there's a capstone. So the idea will be that you learn one thing quite deeply and then you start applying that knowledge and with other examples. So absolutely, as Jimmy pointed out, the idea is that you will build your own muscle memory and then apply it elsewhere. The idea in the one-year program cannot be that we teach everything about data sciences. So this is not a master's degree, full master's or PhD degree in data science, right? Purpose is for you to be able to solve practical problems and practical challenges, and we will give you enough information on that. Jinnath? Thank you. Thank you, James Sinando. Um, Rakesh has a very specific question. How much of the focus is on reinforcement learning and federated learning? OK, so, so I think that's. Um, Again, these are specializations, yeah. and um, I, I think you know in Silicon Valley we have a saying, you know, uh, first things first and second things never. And so again, our what's really important here is you really develop uh, muscle memory around core concepts. Now, reinforcement learning is is a very important part of of, of, of data science and, and and deep learning. So we'll spend some time on that. Um, uh, but uh, again, that that's going to be an advanced topic and. Um, and we may have a specialization around it more than um, having it as a core concept. But but there will be some time spent on it, and people will get to see what it is and get to use it. But it's a very vast field. So we could spend the entire year just doing reinforcement learning. But uh, that's not an option. So we'll, we'll give you a flavor of what reinforcement learning is and, and some applications uh, where uh, it can be used. And, and so, so these advanced topics, um, um, we, we will we will we'll cover them, but we won't get into the depth that maybe that we would normally get into if we we're doing a master's or PhD program. Yeah, that's it. Perfect. Jinnat? Yep. Yeah. So another 
question of similar vein. Um, you mentioned about GPUs and TPUs, um, Sanket says, and he says he wants to know if there'll be labs for this or it'll be done on, uh, on cloud-based applications. Sure. So, so um, yeah, so, so we will be working in the cloud uh, and we'll have access to uh, GPUs and CPUs. And um, and so we'll be, you, you know, one of, the, one of the first tasks I'll give you is, here, just take this uh, notebook, uh, take this um, problem, and now we're going to solve it using a CPU. Then we're going to solve it on a GPU, and then we're going to solve it on a TPU. And then you'll see uh, the question will be how fast is uh, the TPU and GPU relative to the CPU. So we'll get to get hands-on experience. And so for some of the problems, um, we will not be able to solve them on a CPU, but uh, on a GPU only. So um, you, you will get hands-on experience um, working with with these different types of um, Hardware. Uh, thanks, Jimmy. Anando, maybe we'll take one question more before yeah. we go to the presentation. Yeah. Um, how useful is this course for someone who already knows deep learning? Ramya. So yeah. So uh, I guess um, um, in my experience, um, you know, these are complicated topics. And uh, to become a subject matter expert, you really um, you need to master different things. You, know, you need to master the theory. You need to be able to uh, operationalize the theory in code. And then you need to be able to solve problems with it as well. And so I think the more exposure you have, um, the more um, you will learn. So for me, um, certainly for my courses, I can speak for my courses here. Uh, he here's how things are going to go. There's going to be two tracks in, in my courses. One track is going to be a core track, which will be everybody will have to take it and understand it, and you'll be uh, given quizzes and, 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 and the exams around these core track topics and, and homework as well. And you'll be expected to, to do all that stuff. And, and so th that will be less theoretically oriented. It's more about understanding the, 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 the ideas and, and kind of the, the general principles and then how to take that and apply it. So, so, um, uh, but then the, there's another track, which is the theoretical track. And this is kind of the optional uh, kind of stretch goal type track where uh, we will be delving into the theory. And so for some people, they love theory, they love uh, the mechanics of building stuff from scratch and, and all that stuff. And, we, and, and, and you will get an opportunity to do this and I will encourage you to do it if, if you have time and interest. And so this hopefully will provide a stretch or challenge for people who have maybe had prior experience and exposure. And so there's always room for improvement. And so hopefully um, this will provide enough of challenge and so there will be optional challenges and, and homeworks uh, for folks who have maybe had prior experience. And hopefully these will be uh, sufficiently engaging for you to really benefit and get a lot from the course as well. Yeah, so let me take a different angle to that uh, question also, Jimmy. So the point is, this is a very much a hands-on and a practical course for a long, uh, long-term purpose, which is the experience of how to uh, really build solutions end to end. So there are big courses on design thinking and systems thinking that we are teaching along the way, as well as the overall AI systems courses. So it's not just about one topic of deep learning or neural networks only, right? I mean, that's, you can go as deep as you want by the theory part of it. But if you want to build products and build solutions and actually apply, you may need to make design choices and you may not apply everything at the same time. So it's if you just want to learn the deep learning, that's one thing. But if you learn want to learn how to apply it in real life situations and build solutions, it's a completely different discussion. So you must understand our solution, our course, the whole program designed for that is not designed to teach only deep learning as a topic. So that's a key point one must understand. So sure. Yeah. 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 So and so and I just built. I mean, you saw the the Venn diagram uh, of skill sets that I think that to make you a rock star is not just saying, "Hey, I'm a really great programmer" or "I'm a I'm a great machine learner." You yeah. need a whole plethora of skills, and some of those skills are domain dependent, and some are softer skills like uh, Ananda was talking about leadership and problem solving and communication. You know, all those things are things we'll be 
uh, emphasizing throughout the program with different courses and exercises. So um, yeah, so so the deep learning is definitely a very important part. But as I say, even within that, we will have these tracks that will hopefully keep you engaged and excited and 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 uh, and, and maybe a good use of your time. Yep. Great, Shina. Let's jump to the presentation a little bit and then we can sure. So we'll take the rest of the questions post presentation. I mean, uh, okay. All right. So, um, so just a uh, so we'll run through this presentation a little faster this time because I think some of you might have attended some of the webinars, and so we will just specifically talk about uh, uh, some of the topics here. So, of course, this is the fellowship program, which is a one-year fully residential program. It's uh, for people with graduate degrees uh, who may have zero to some multiple years of experience. We don't, uh, while we originally advertised up to five years experience, but we don't think that's a consideration. It all depends on how much uh, one is willing to learn. Um, so this is in with partnership with UC Berkeley, the Sutaraj Center for Entrepreneurship and Technology. Next slide. So uh, for people who have understood it so far and from this discussion also, you would have understood there's a core piece, which is the AI ML part of it, uh, with going at uh, starting from the fundamentals all the way uh, and going very deep into the topic. But at the same time, we have courses on design thinking and system thinking so that you can start thinking of how to solve problems and not just to become a programmer. And then uh, there is in parallel, there's uh, what we call a grand challenges lecture series. What these uh, lectures are for is to talk about uh, the problem areas that can be solved using uh, or other, at least some of the problems that can be addressed uh, with the tools that you're being taught, right? And examples of that could be environment and pollution, would be examples of uh, things like agriculture, things like health, and also topics, uh, real world challenges, uh, topics like FinTech, and some of the problems of fraud detection, security, all of these areas. So these are uh, topics that will be covered by different uh, experts in these spaces. So there'll be, for example, a professor from Johns Hopkins will come and talk about how environment uh, affects health, for, uh, as an example. So things like that, right? And so uh, this all leads up to what we call a challenge lab. And the challenge lab is, uh, fundamentally a place where students will get a chance to be an entrepreneur and try to pick up a problem of, from the problem set that we'll talk about and then actually try to form a company to solve it. So what it will give you over the period of 12 weeks uh, where you will also have mentors both from entrepreneurship aspect as well as from technical aspect uh, or technology or a vertical aspect um, where basically you learn how to think of starting a company in a particular space, trying to solve a particular problem. What it will give you is the skills of thinking of products, but also think of how to take it to market, which means completely different considerations might be required in the process. And that's something that gives you a complete understanding of how companies think when they think of building an interesting solution. And then, then we lead on to uh, what we have is a capstone uh, project. And this capstone project could be done with a particular company or it could be with a research lab or a research or a professor who is conducting some cutting edge research and would like to come up with a paper at the end of this uh, whole effort. So you'll be, have a chance to work uh, with uh, specific mentors of which this is, uh, the, we split it in two parts. One of it is four weeks is on, uh, on site, or uh, sorry, off site, which means on campus. And here you really build out the plan of what to implement and so that you don't waste time when you go on site and work with the mentors directly where you'll get a chance to build out something uh, uh, completely. So that's the opportunity we have. In parallel, we'll have a number of self-development and leadership courses. These courses will teach you about how to think rightly, how to learn rightly, how to uh, build teams, work within teams, and uh, things like that. So what this gives you is builds your character as well as you go along so that you can become either entrepreneurs or become a leader in the organization that you go into. Next slide. So 
you can quickly see that our goals here are very simple that we are helping you to become one of the three things. One, either you can become an entrepreneur yourself, so it will give you enough tools as well as enough mentors and helping hand to go and build a, a company. Or you could be joining a top company as a technology leader where the expectation of the company will be a little different than if you're just coming out of a typical engineering school where you'll become probably become a programmer or you'll become a salesperson uh, and learn everything from scratch for next two, three years. Here, you have, you have an opportunity to actually go and say, I can build solutions. So you can become a product manager or be on a completely different track, even if you're, you're on a purely technical field. Uh, you can become an architect, things like that. The other thing is, of course, you have a chance to uh, interact with professors at uh, top universities. And so you will have the opportunity to decide or think about whether you want to work uh, with a professor at a university eventually and as a research person rather than becoming joining a company so these are like different tracks and we give you all the opportunities to interact with the right people as well as the right exposure to think of these options next slide so we are talking about taking in 60 fellows next slide of which we are also offering uh, scholarships as you know about 20 of this that we uh, full scholarship, 20 or 50 percent scholarship, and 20 or 25 percent. The idea is that we don't believe that uh, financial constraint should be the reason why you will be held back. And so this is, as you know, it's a highly, a, a completely a collective philanthropy initiative. And so we want people to succeed in any, any way they can. Yeah, next slide. So you'll see on the, this slide and the next one, uh, a pretty stellar uh, list of faculty members. And you have, would have seen this also on the website. And you are actually talking to have the chance to just listen to uh, Dr. James Shanahan uh, live. So we will try to hold one or two other uh, webinars as well over the next couple of months um, with other, other faculty members as well. But the point here I'm trying to make is we have spent a lot of time trying to get together faculty so that we really make sure the students get a lot out of this program. Just next slide. Yeah. And, and many of the courses here will be highly practical. So if you look at this list, um, as an example, Dr. David Chesney is going to talk about systems thinking. And his course will be taught only through case studies of real examples and how to think of solving those problems. Uh, you'll have uh, King Shruta Gupta, who actually works with Google, who will come in and teach Python but at the same time, talk about how to apply the th start thinking in terms of AIML uh, on solving practical problems. David Law will come and talk about the will actually teach the Challenge Lab program, and just giving you an idea, flavor of different people who will talk about different things. Next slide. We have a number of uh, large companies in our network. Uh, this is just a short list of some of the companies. The idea is that. We have a strong, vast network of companies that were connected to us who actually have uh, wanted us to build this program. And the idea is that they want to hire from this group of people. They are influencing the, the program themselves, and they're involved. And that's the exciting part of this whole process. Next slide. And as some of you already know, who have already gone through the process, we are you are filling an application form. We are asking you to write some interesting and creative answers. We would definitely want you to be clear. Don't try to copy uh, from the, uh, you know, from Google or from some Wikipedia. We want you to actually give some original answers with thought because we are going to test that out in the interview process, and we will ask you questions around that. And there's an online test, which is a very simple test to test some level of your math and programming. And again, our goal is to make sure we get people not to just you know reduce the number of people applying, but to make sure that people will come in and succeed and don't get shortchanged in the process. We don't want you to come in and waste your year. We want you to come in and really get some, get some great aspects, uh, great learning from this process. Next slide. These are the dates. We are already in the round two. And we'll be closing out round two shortly. And then the next round of interviews will start. The people, some of you are already gone through the round one interviews. And then, of course, there'll be a round three as well for people who are applying late. Next slide. And that's all we have. And we'll open up to questions.
Thank you, Anando. Um, while this question is addressed to James, Anando, I'm sure you will take great joy answering it. The question is, will you be taking the course in person? Um, yes, I'll be there in person. And I, I just build on what Anando said as well. You know, uh, I encourage you all to apply for the, for the for this program. It's a very exciting program. And the idea here is that we want you to kind of show that you have a curiosity and an appetite and then you have some aptitude to be successful in this course here. So I, I think that just be confident, put your best foot forward. And like Ananda said, you know, talk about your personal experiences and show some of your skill, but you know, don't, don't worry too much. I mean, again, we, we want you to be successful in this program here and we're here to help you to improve and, and develop skills that you don't have today or maybe you want to refine them further. So apply. Don't, don't uh, be put off by the formalities of the application process. It's not that tough. It's not too bad. And again, our, our goal here is to, to get a, a collection of students here um, that are going to have big deltas. That, that will, Big delta means you learn a lot by coming on the program. And so I encourage you, do not uh, be scared of this process. Just go for it. Just put your two feet forward and, and just, just go. Thanks, James. And I want to say every photo that you have, of the faculty members that you have seen on our website or here, same, uh, every one of them will be at the campus, on campus, in person, and teaching a, a class between two to six weeks, every one of them. Thank you, James Anando. Um, a question from Shrey that we missed out earlier. Um, how much of this course is going to be focused on deep learning models and its applications? So again, you know, the, the course is uh, it's broad and, and like, uh, like Ananda and I have pre previously talked about, you know, there's there are different skill sets we want you to develop. So part of the skill sets are that we want you to be able to, to write code. And uh, another skill set is we want you to, to solve problems using machine learning. And deep learning is going to be one of those, you know, core, core um, building blocks. But deep learning is, is not just a, a, a simple single thing. It's, it kind of pulls in all aspects of machine learning. We just can't just say, hey, uh, um, <clears throat> we just focus on uh, back propagation as a learning algorithm. We have to learn about things like cross-fold validation. We've got to learn about metrics and uh, objective functions. And we've got to learn about different algorithms that allow us to hone in on good um, slopes and intercepts for our equation of a line, for example. And so these are just very general principles. So we have to understand machine learning core concepts uh, very well if we were going to be um, if we're going to use and, and, and understand machine and deep learning. So um, I, I think that maybe it just in a, in, a, in a kind of maybe one fifth of the course might be devoted to maybe one quarter of the course might be devoted to machine learning and deep learning. And then, um, you know, so I didn't really talk about, um, you know, um, data and data management. So we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about how to store data and manage data because, you know, we just don't do machine learning in a vacuum. We have to use data and this data could, could, could come uh, in the form of a spreadsheet or it, it could come in a, in a, in a large scale um, database or, or it could be distributed over cluster computers. So we're going to look at um, Spark and MapReduce systems as a means to store and manage data and also do machine learning as well. So th th these are all, um, so in some ways, when, when in, in my day-to-day -day job, uh, when I talk about machine learning, you know, that's only a small aspect. That's, that's the kind of nice, uh, like that's about 20% of the whole effort that goes into building and deploying these systems. And in this program, I think it's kind of be, going to be the same kind of ratio. Um, we, we have to, to, to solve a problem, we need to get the data, we need to store the data. We need to talk to the domain experts. Maybe you are the domain experts. We, there's communication involved. We have to write up and write reports. And in, in our case, well, I'm, 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 I will personally have you write your reports in Jupyter Notebooks. Um, you will do this maybe with LaTeX and Markdown. Um, you'll write the code, you'll uh, visualize the data, visualize your results. Uh, so all these are kind of soft skills that you will be developing 
uh, in my courses and throughout the program. And like uh, Ananda was saying, you know, there's leadership skills, there's startup, business, communication, um, working in groups uh, and communicating and collaborating. All those things will be very much part and parcel of the course. And like I said, deep learning, I think, will make up uh, maybe 15% uh, of your time or uh, and, and machine learning, maybe 20, you know, which subsumes deep learning. And then there's data management. So maybe all in all, um, these, these technical side of the course will be more than half uh, of your time. But um, I, I think that's kind of, Ananda, maybe can maybe add some more as well. Yeah. Here. yeah, I almost want to say that uh, it almost feels like I want to say that uh, you want to come to this course so that you don't ask this question again. Because uh, we must understand every tool or a technique has to be applied to and fit to a problem that you're trying to solve and not just you know learning about the technique. So once you're in the course, you'll be surprised by it and you will see how much you learn, but from under also understand what you do not need to apply when. And that's an important aspect. So I think you should not worry too much about it. Uh, once you're in, you'll realize the value of the whole process. Shina? Thank you, James Anando. Um... Either of you could take this, in fact, uh, what would an ideal day look like during the data X course work period and then subsequently during the challenge lab? Okay, I'll, okay, go ahead, you want to answer? Um, okay, so, so for me, um, uh, you know, th there, there'll be intense days. You, you, will, uh, um, you will not have time to dream, uh, basically. And so typically uh, for, for my students, um, they, they um, so, so here's why some, some, some of my students have kind of summarized their time with me as follows. Um, they, they've said, okay, well, um, tell your friends and family that you, you love them and you'll be thinking of them and, and, and you'll see them in a couple of weeks because in the meantime, you're going to be just heads down learning and absorbing uh, amazing stuff, but you will have to be available in order to do that. And so it, it'll be pretty intense. So you, your days uh, and nights will be uh, filled with um, fun activities uh, that will help you internalize and develop muscle memory around um, the concepts we'll be teaching. So, um, and again, they'll, they'll be peppered with quizzes um, and with um, notebooks and with problems, uh, homeworks and, and exams. So. And, and the goal here is not to just give you a hard time, but it is for you to develop muscle memory. So it's like training for a marathon. You just can't show up and run the marathon. We're gonna have all, all this uh, training schedule so that you can uh, run that marathon um, um, uh, after, doing, um, after putting in the time and effort. So all, all I can say is uh, bring your passion, um, clear your schedules, and uh, be available because uh, it's going to be full on um, intensive. So when I'm in town, you you, you know it's going to be busy. And so my, my period in town will uh, will be you know uh, brief. It'll be just weeks. And um, and so uh, all I can say is um, make sure you're available and uh, and leverage the opportunity. And uh, and I, I guess just building on an earlier question. You know, this, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to develop relationships that will be lifelong. And hopefully I'll get to know you all very well. And uh, we will be, you know, lifelong colleagues, friends, um, and not only just me, but uh, other faculty members and also your fellow students as well. So they, 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 your peers, you, you're just going to have, you know, this is going to be an intense experience, but it's going to be one of those things that will live with you forever, and you'll have you'll have these relationships. So this is one other big plus that the, the networking and the friendships that you will develop will be lifelong. And uh, I think Ananda and and, and Srinat can also attest to that. Um, and, and this is kind of like similar to other programs at this level. So if you're if you're studying at this level, you're you're you're, you're going to invest time and energy, and uh, and you're going to enjoy it. And uh, like I said, it's going to last for your, for, for life. So Ananda, you want to? I have almost nothing to add. You have really covered it all. It is going <laughs> to be intense for sure. And so I think it'll be a lot of fun, exactly as you said. Uh, I have nothing more to add other than that. OK. <laughs> Thanks. Great answers. Thanks. Um, um, I think we have more questions than time at this point. But we, so we'll prioritize and take. There is this one good question from Ramya again. 
um, how will having no experience, uh, work experience, impact me um, post Laksha? And she goes on to add, because an average data science job description looks like looks like it's made for people with a couple of years of experience. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, my, my my take on that is that first of all, you're brave, but that doesn't that does. But I think that you're going to learn a lot. Uh, you know, the goal here is, like I said, we're working at multiple levels here, and um, and we want to make sure that everybody is um, making progress. And uh, the best thing I can say is show up and clear your schedule and just make yourself available and um, work hard. And um, the, uh, for me, what's important is, and, and I'm just speaking for my courses right now, and I think also across the, the other co program, courses in the program as well, um, our goal here is to teach things at a level that you know we're going to be calling on things that you did in high school and and kindergarten like i said the equation of a line y is equal to mx plus c you know or b whatever uh, uh is like the fundamental that we'll come back to over and over and so we'll try to connect the dots in terms of high school type math that you should be familiar with and therefore um this will hopefully um um ground some of the kind of theoretical uh, concepts and principles um, and, and uh, make you feel that you, you that you know and you learn, and you're learning things so the the, the material we're going to make it very accessible um, and and also we're going to provide challenge and as I say for me there, there's a two track um, um, program I'll be pursuing in my courses uh, from core to, to kind of really hardcore theoretical. And so um, the hardcore theoretical track may not be for everybody. And uh, if you're um, coming into this field uh, for the first time, then um, you can stretch and try to do some of these things. But um, you might save those also for later after the course is over and pursue them at your own time and leisure. So I, I think um, uh, welcome, I would say, to, to the program. And I, I think you're going to learn a lot and, um, and we're going to support you and make sure um, that you're, you're going to be successful. So let me add to that uh, another variation to this. So uh, the question also was about what whether data scientists who come, typical jobs are you need a couple of years of experience. And what we are trying to do is we are really trying to provide you that in an accelerated fashion here, right? So once you go through the challenge lab and the capstone, uh, that's why the capstone is designed the way it is. Most com most uh, institutes get a ch give you a chance to do internship, but this is a very very different type of process. We are saying that we are going to one curate the projects. We will talk to the companies beforehand. We'll make every student go spend four weeks on preparing for it so that they really understand what they're going to solve, and go and solve the problem fully. So we are going to try to give you a very accelerated set of experiences, which add up. Second thing what we're doing is, as I said, you saw the list of companies and we're talking to others as well who are not on that list. Uh, for example, a leading uh, multinational bank, uh, which is US-based bank. And so we're talking to them and they have asked us questions like, okay, if I want to hire from your, uh, your school, then tell us what kind of program do you have expose us to that, tell us that we also have a chance to give inputs into that. And we have completely agreed to that because the whole point is to make it a very experiential as well as very practical program so that you once you come out of it, you just get a job in the right role in the right way. And we are going to work very hard on it. And you are seeing this in the choice of the courses, the curriculum, if the, once you see the details of it, you'll realize it. You're seeing it already in the choice of faculty members. And you will see in the choice of the companies that we we'll choose to work with and who will then hire you. Uh, so you are absolutely at no disadvantage. In fact, you will be at a much higher advantage. If you were to just do a, any typical data science course and go, it will take you quite a few years to actually get to the right job. But here, you get an opportunity to work with the right people now. That's the real opportunity for us. Dinat? Thanks, Anando. I'm afraid we still have a barrage of unanswered questions, uh, but we are all, also over time. 
Um, do we take one more question or do let's we- Let's take one more question. And I think uh, we let's take that list of questions and address them maybe over the phone with the people directly. Right. So Mayank, Anushkrit, uh, Ramya again, a um, couple of others who asked questions, you know, maybe we'll, we'll get in touch with you over the next couple of days and answer your question. Uh, this is maybe a, a good question uh, to end on, Anandho, because we get it a lot. Um, Naveen asks, I have 2.5 years of experience in programming, but I am new to ML and AI. Um, while his question is, what are the prerequisites to get shortlisted? I mean, but also, what is uh, what is the criterion for success, if, if that's the case? So, so I'll, I'll answer that quickly. Uh, so fundamentally, you need to know a certain amount of math. And we have very clearly pointed out type of math that you need to learn. So, and we are happy to share this information. Maybe we can, uh, we'll be happy to send you an email with the type of math that you need to learn. Your programming lets you in already. You will be taught AI ML everything about it anyway. So you don't have to have any pre-knowledge of it. You can do a course in Coursera just because you want to. That's fine. That will only help you. But you don't. I don't think you need any other pre-knowledge except a little bit of grounding on math. If you're a pure programmer who has not done enough math courses, let's say you're not from a math or engineering background and have not done enough math, then I would strongly recommend learning a little bit more of that. Um, just because, not because you need to know before you come, because we are going to have a three-week course on mathematics, which you re require for the course. But at the same time, it will help you. So I would always welcome you that if you come more prepared. But at the same time, you'll be taught everything as well on the course, but at a high speed, which means you'll have to be, as James said, very present in the course uh, and be very involved. That's really what it is. Perfect. Um, thanks, Anandho. Thanks. For James, do you have anything to add to that? or? Um, I'll see you all in class. <laughs> Perfect. Uh, I think that's a fitting note to end on. Uh, thank you so much, uh, James. Thanks for your time, Anandho. Thank you to uh, anyone you. who joined us. Um, thank you so much. Friday evening. Um, uh, thanks, thanks, thanks for doing this, uh, everyone on the webinar. And um, the unanswered questions will get to you. Have a good evening. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Happy Friday. Bye.